Good morning, and thanks for joining us today with Epson America. What we wanted to show today, and I'm thank you very much for attending, is we're focused on showing showing high production DTG printing and how we're redefining what production DTG printing is all about. 100 dark garments per hour, full size, sellable print quality in under one hour and also under $100,000. Rather than talking about it, let's put it in action. Paul, if you don't mind getting started, let's see what we can do. All right, so Paul's getting started. He's loading up our garments and getting things going. Um, as soon as we get that little picture, that's in the other room while we're running this. There we go, it's coming back up on screen. So what we're, what we're trying to show here is Paul's running this, what we're calling a high production workflow using automation features, uh, barcode scanning and, and jobs that are in here. Before we get into that, let me just introduce who's on our call. Uh, so uh, the panelists that are here, uh, obviously you can see Paul that is actually running the equipment, Paul Morales. Uh, also joining me today is Matthew Rome, uh, one of the uh, creators, the first uh, patented inventor of the direct -to garment print system as well as Morgan Lynn, who will also be helped moderating and answering any of the chat questions that we may be having. So let's take a look at what actually is happening. So Paul, as you can see him, uh, that, that picture is gonna be going on and we'll, we'll swap back and forth. We'll check in on when Paul during the, throughout the run to see how, it's, uh, how he's uh, uh, progressing. Uh, but what he's doing is what's called a barcode job automation system. And what we do is we're using a system like our uh, Colorworks C3500 to be able to print um, our job barcode uh, for each one of our shirts that we're printing. When we go and pick a shirt uh, that's ready to print, we stick one of these barcodes on that shirt. And then when it comes time, we're gonna come over to our printer. Um, and as we come, there we go. Uh, as we come over to our printer, we have our barcode reader. We scan one of our barcodes. Uh, as soon as that scans in, that job is ready to go within just a moment or so of us being able to ready to print. So from just a scanning to about a second and a half, two seconds later, we have a job that's up on our screen. We can see it. Uh, the operator that's loading this can see roughly where it's gonna be positioned on the garment. And all they need to do is press the start button to begin the job. And that first shirt starts coming out the door. High production DTG printing using these type of workflows are used by many large companies to be able to be very efficient and make sure that their production floor runs very smoothly. To get into a little bit more about the business side of how that helps a business, uh, I'm gonna ask Matt to join us now. And Matt, if you can tell us a little bit about how customers are using automation in their, their workshops. Well, Tim, as you know, and anyone out there that has been in the uh, custom garment business for the last few years, you know that orders have increased. We've been getting a lot more orders, but one thing that's happened is the size of orders has decreased. Instead of a customer coming in and ordering 100 shirts, they're gonna order 10, but you're gonna get more orders. And customization is very important. People want to have their own unique style. And something that we have seen during COVID, uh, one thing is that the uh, amount of orders have increased, especially one-off orders. It's really taken a transformation. It, COVID has really accelerated the digital transformation of our industry. So it's very important that you're able to turn these orders quickly. Everybody wants instant gratification nowadays. You know, a lot of the larger shipping companies have ordered two day delivery, you know? So if you order something, you expect it to get it in two days. And a lot of your customers expect that also. And with the, the amount of uh, social things that are going on, everybody remembers all the hoopla last summer. A lot of these people that you saw out on in the streets were wearing custom t-shirts. So they needed them very quickly. They wanted them fast. So this is where direct to garment and workflow automation really works. It's growing. And for you to keep up and to keep your business viable, you're going to have to adapt to the changing times. And having workflow automation along with a fast printer will really help you achieve those goals. So let's take a, another look here. Let's go back to Paul and see where he's at. 
All right. He's been kicking out those shirts, keeping those things going. I'm not sure, I'm not keeping track of the count, but I know we do have a total uh, counter that's going. And, and I know where our goal is here to, to hit 100 full-size shirts uh, before uh, we get to 11 o'clock today. So um, as Matt mentioned, automation, there's a lot of features that come with that. And I know it's kind of, kind of confusing when I talk with a lot of customers, uh, and a lot of people who are trying to do this. Um, they start out with, I, yeah, I want automation. Okay, well, what exactly are you looking for? Um, it's not as simple as just, uh, you know, buy a piece of software and plug it in and away you go. To make things really automated and work for your company and your workflow, it needs to be a little bit tailored to what you're trying to do. So what I have on the screen behind me, um, it's probably maybe a little bit difficult to see, but if I kind of just uh, group it into, there's really kind of a couple categories. I just break it into two big categories of automation features. You have production or print production uh, automation, and you also have non-production type automation. And what I mean by that is you have things when an order comes in that it's checking your inventory management system. It may be doing things like uh, generating an invoice. Um, it may be also doing other parts tying in with your customer uh, relationship management software for being able to do marketing and email blasts and other things that go on with that. That is great if you could tie in your entire workflow to do all that, but most people usually aren't looking to get that far involved into a really sophisticated workflow system. They simply want to get I want my print production system. I want my operators when they're running my equipment, whether it's an F2100 or our Shirtcaller F3070, they want them running it as fast as they can. And that's what we're gonna look at some of the features that Wasatch has put together um, in their, pro their product called Software, um, which is kind of exciting. Not only is it the software um, run our uh, direct-to-garment equipment, it also runs pretty much mostly any type of product that's out there. So if you're a, a t-shirt and sign printer, um, you can create banners and signs using Wasatch software as well as also uh, your t excuse me, your t-shirts and garments. So there's just two, two types of workflows that we're just going to kind of look at just briefly. Um, there's kind of what we call the e-commerce workflow. And this is where jobs are coming in completely customized or jobs come in where a, a customer may upload a piece of artwork. And what you need to do is there's an e-commerce site. Using that software, it can connect um, to your e-commerce platform, be able to pull that job in and generate a job ticket. Uh, and that's something where, you know, I was showing earlier where we had the uh, barcodes um, that get printed out. We, we can have that where you get a sheet that tells how many jobs can need to get um, uh, produced, which shirts to, to print, and that job gets processed and, and held. We call that all front office work, meaning that that doesn't get in the way of your production floor. When we get to the back office, it's simply that barcode is on that garment. When the operator loads it onto the printer, they scan the barcode, the job goes to the printer, the exact job needed for that uh, shirt, and it prints. And it's simple, and it's great. And then it eliminates a lot of any type of errors that can happen, like I put the wrong artwork on the wrong color shirt, um, simply by having it where the operator doesn't need to make that decision. It's already done for them. All they do is scan the barcode. That's one type of workflow. The one that we're actually using today, um, if I get my slide here to move forward, is simply something called a job pool from a library. And what this means is we have artwork uh, and many of our customers do, uh, they might not be dealing with an e-commerce site where they're doing custom works, but they may have a library of maybe a thousand different images or hundreds of thousands of images. And what they do rather than um, uh, doing that, when they get an order, they simply pull an order, generate a job ticket, and that has the jobs already there and it just references that that job needs to get printed on a Gildan 2000 extra large size black shirt. Um, maybe is all that's there. So when the operator goes to do it, they scan the barcode, the barcode pulls that job from Wasatch, sends it down to the printer, and the printer takes off and we get our job printed. They don't necessarily need to get into all the shipping and other systems. They may already have something in place for that, or they may be working with customers where they're shipping a box of maybe, maybe they're giving them 24, giving them you know, six dozen shirts uh, at a time. Using the barcode system, they don't need to get it quite involved in making a sophisticated system. But this alone, that pull from library is probably one of the most popular features in really speeding up your workflow. Speaking of that, um, when we get into actually the workflow of what we're looking at, there's more to it than just uh, software is a big part, print hardware is a big spot. You hear a lot of people talk about speeds and feeds. Um, one of the important things is print speed is not everything. It doesn't actually translate to productivity. And what I mean by that is you still have a lot of tasks other than the printing of the garment. You have things like loading the shirt. The printer may need to do a pre-print routine or maintenance routine beforehand. Um, the garment needs to get ingested into the printer. You're doing your, after it's printing, you need to unload it. You need to, the printer may need to do an end of sequence job type of uh, cleaning routine. What we've done is we've taken 
um, kind of leveraged our, our, our technology. We put that together with Wasatch's uh, software technology to really reduce the amount of non-printing steps involved. So with Epson Silicon custom made ARM processors that we have in our, in our hardware, we're able, as soon as that data starts being presented to the printer, we don't need the whole image. It's kind of like what I like to think of as a Netflix. As soon as we start streaming that data, that printer can begin doing any of the activity. It can prepare for the job. It starts doing any of the routines it needs to do. The operator can be loading that garment on. Wasatch software already did the pre-processing of that image. So we don't have to wait for that job to rip right before we print. It's processed, ready to go. And all it's doing is simply pulling it from the library and away we go. When it comes to the printing part, that's where we want most of our time. That's really the value add part of what makes money at the end of the day. Um, the more we can print, the more product you can sell. We want to maximize that. And things like the end of job routine, the maintenance, as you're unloading the garment, the printer is doing any of that at the same exact time. So you're not sitting around with, uh, with an operator wasting time. If we get into a little bit about the product, uh, I'm not going to get too money into the uh, specs and speeds and feeds, but there are some really unique things in here. And so not everything is all just about print engines and print speeds, um, but when it does come down to it, having a big engine with a lot of horsepower definitely doesn't hurt. And these are what we feature inside of our new Epson Surecaller F3070. These are twin uh, dual TFP uh, precision core print heads. Each one of them, there's about 8,000 nozzles per print head. One is just dedicated for white, the other is for color. And what this allows us to do is true one pass printing Whereas that garment, uh, as we start applying ink, we're putting down the white layer um, first. And as that garment continues to move forward, then the color is being put down on top. And I believe if we check in with Paul real quick, you'll see probably a close up as you look into the printer, uh, you can actually see uh, where the, uh, the white, oh, I might have just missed it, um, where the white's being put down first um, on, the, on the garment when it's way in the back is where our white head is closer to the back side of the printer. Um, and then our color is being put down uh, as it gets closer to exiting the printer. So we'll keep that window always, uh, always up so you can always see there, but look in close. You can see as that garment goes in, um, there's a couple things actually happening there that's pretty cool, but we'll get the lights turned on and we'll start getting printing right away right here. Um, there we go. So our first swipe, we're starting to put down some of them. This is just the white ink and there's a good distance between there. So the white ink has a chance, a good chance, uh, not chance, but good ability to, to uh, uh, start curing or, or get developing a film. So it hits a, by the time our, our color hit, our color ink lands on top, um, it has a good skin layer on there where you're not gonna get mixing of the, the color ink and the white ink together to get kind of splotchy looking prints. As you can see, our color is just starting to get applied at the very end of the uh, print head. Uh, or at the print zone, uh, our color is being put out. It looks like we got a pretty cool looking monster uh, happening here. One other thing, when you saw that garment go in, uh, there is a, a feature that we have that's unique on the Surecaller F3070. It's the first time uh, I'm aware of anybody actually having this feature. It's called a garment thickness optimization. And what this does, it's, it's not just looking at the, an auto platen height setting. What this does is it, as that garment loads into the printer, it scans the length of that garment. So if you had a little pocket seam uh, or a different spot, it, it measures and creates a profile map, the highest point, the lowest point, and the largest average print area. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna set and move the entire print carriage. It does this almost instantaneously. As that garment moves in, once we find out what set point we wanna go to, it will move that print carriage up automatically um, to set it to a particular height that's gonna give us great print quality. And then the garment will print. The difference is between this and an automatic platen adjustment is a platen adjustment is going to, to find the highest point and then move your garment down far away from the print heads. On this system, what we're looking at, if you happen to have a pocket t-shirt and you want to print not on the pocket, but on the main area of the garment, it's going to ignore the height of the pocket and set it to where the main print area is of the garment. And that's going to give us the best print quality possible. And that is completely configurable. If you wanted to print on the pockets, you can say print to the highest point. Or if you're printing with a large uh, hoodie uh, with a, a pocket on, on the bottom, uh, and you can say print to the lowest area. And that way you can ensure that we're optimizing the print quality specifically for um, the, uh, the area where that print's gonna happen at. So that's definitely a unique feature that's in here. There's a lot more features we have in our print system, uh, but when it comes down to what these things really do for us, uh, as I mentioned at the start, you know, our goal here today is we have two printers and we're shooting to get over 100 dark shirts a, an hour. Um, what that means is on a single printer, 
uh, we're able to produce roughly about 50 full size sellable print qualities. This is a 14 by 16 size image uh, is what we're printing and producing uh, with our SureColor F3070. You may see a lot of numbers out there from other people, and it's really important to make sure you make look at that comparison to see what are you comparing it to. Sellable print quality um, that's coming off 14 by 16 full size images or these tiny small images printed in a high speed draft mode. There's a big difference. It's really important to make sure what can a printer actually do and not just how fast it can print, but what the actual throughput or productivity of a system can be. So Matt, I think I'm gonna ask you, if, I think we're gonna check in with Paul first to see if we can get a little bit more, but Matt, if you don't mind also telling us a little bit how some customers are taking advantage of that productivity to really bump up their, their sales. Well, Tim, you know, you've heard the old adage, time is money, right? And that is true because time is something that you, you can't manufacture, you can't buy time. So it is the most precious commodity in your business is time. So when you use the 3070, it, it's just like you said, it's not just speeds and feeds. There's a whole lot more to it. You know, whether you have the, the print heads and the matched ink and pre-treat systems, purpose-made print heads by Epson, you have software, it all comes together to help you be more productive. You know, a lot of guys out there, some of our competitors are showing you an ROI calculator. Now, anybody can take and make the numbers fit whatever they're trying to talk about, right? But the bottom line is, how are you productive? You know, and are you going to produce a sellable product? You could print 400 shirts an hour, but if they aren't a good sellable product or they don't look good or your machine has to stop and clean all the time or it's expensive to maintain, it really, who cares? So what you need to look at in a, in a DPG printer is how long it does take to print that shirt and how much maintenance, what is the throughput? If you have to stop and rip the design every time before you print, you could just be wasting time. And the other thing is you got to make sure that you have very good prints. So when you take a look at the 3070, its production speed surpasses some of these machines that are 200, 300, 400 thousand dollars. And like one of my friends said, the beauty of the 3070 is for the price of these other machines, you can buy two 3070s and produce just as much as what they do in an hour. And you have enough money left over for a jet ski and a brand new pickup to pull it. So again, look at how much time you spend overall on everything, not just print speed alone. Right. And now it's time to check in on Paul again. Yeah. Paul, I think it's, uh, he's, he's working. It doesn't even look like he's breaking a sweat though. He's, uh, he's got a good, uh, good pace going, a good rhythm, and he just keeps these machines cranking away. So uh, it's fantastic on how fast these machines, if you're, if you're timing it, I don't know if anybody's got a stopwatch or something and you want to go and do that. But if you're timing it, there's a shirt coming off, give or take about every 35 seconds or so. Some are a little faster, some are a little sl uh, slower. As I said, every print we're making is uh, we're maxing out our 14 by 16 platen. So there's no, there's no uh, punches being thrown here. These are all uh, full size prints. In some cases, some of those images may be like a 14 by 14, uh, but we are going for the full size, maxing out one of the dimensions, at least on that platen uh, that we have going in here. So speed's definitely important, but you know, if, you, if you're printing a lot of stuff just to go fast, but it's not sellable or you got a lot of waste happening, uh, that's where we definitely can get into some trouble. So there are things that we do to make sure that the quality of these garments um, are more than just, it's not just about speed, but we're producing good high speed uh, prints, but also maintaining the quality. There's a feature we have on our newest uh, SureColor F3070 in the new Precision Core print head uh, that we, we have in our, our system. It's called nozzle verification technology. Um, simply put, our engineers are, are a bunch of uh, scientists and uh, good engineer guys. 
and gals and have come up with a really intuitive way to do this. Since we build our own print heads, um, every time we shoot a drop of ink out of that printer or out of the, one of the nozzles, we know we can, we, put, we can measure how much power was needed to push that ink out. But not only are we pushing ink out of that nozzle and firing drops onto that garment, it also listens and detects how much effort was needed. And is there something possibly either obstructing a nozzle, like you have a piece of lint or dust, uh, or is it something where maybe we, we lost some ink in that nozzle where it's too easy? It's kind of almost like trying to punch at a boxing or a, a big punching bag. Uh, if you're punching in the air, there's no resistance. You start hitting a big heavyweight bag, you're going to feel that resistance. It's in there and you can drive through it. That feedback, every time we're firing from that print head, we get that feedback loop that goes in there. And what really is exciting is that printer can take that information real time as it's happening. And so we know, hey, that last drop, it was too difficult. You know what, we can fire a larger droplet from a different size, uh, from an adjacent nozzle, because we do have variable size droplets uh, that we can put down. So we can put down a bigger drop to fill in that void where maybe that one nozzle wasn't firing properly. Knowing that the next time around uh, and the next pass, we can, if that nozzle is not coming back, we can automatically go in and just instead of that, we take several passes as we go over the garment with the print head. It's kind of uh, goes back and forth in a serpentine motion. Uh, we'll simply just fire on a different nozzle on a different pass uh, that's in there to fill that void so that the print quality is maintained so you don't have streaky or banding looking images uh, that you have. Not only is that important making sure that you have good sellable quality that you're there, uh, that you're able to get to your customers. The other part is, is from a quality assurance part, you're not getting product going out the door that you didn't maybe didn't catch, but your customers will. And unfortunately, when a customer is not happy with their print quality uh, and they see those defects, it usually costs quite a bit more and a lot of time and effort to be able to, re, uh, to rebuild that relationship with that customer. So that's a major part that's in the print head technology. As we mentioned, that garment thickness optimization that we use with the system, uh, not only does it make it easier for an operator to load the garment on, so it goes faster, they don't have to, it, uh, we have a special uh, uh, hanger at the end of the, the platen that helps align that garment so you're not putting crooked onto a shirt. The other part that's really good about that is that garment thickness optimization, not only is it optimize the print quality, but also checks to make sure is the platen, is the garment too high? Uh, so maybe there's a wrinkle or a pucker on the shirt or a crease. You wouldn't want to print onto a garment that has a crease because after it goes out to the customer, you're gonna have an area where there's no ink. Uh, but also if the garment was too low, it checks for those. And if it is out of bounds where it's either too high or too low, it will notify the operator and they can simply just make the adjustment to the print and then send it back in and off they go. Um, but trying to make sure that we have that quality is a major part in terms of making sure that you have good sellable quality, you got a good brand, you can maintain your reputation as being a stellar uh, print quality provider uh, to your customers. So with that, Matt, I'm not sure if you want to, uh, we're going to check in with Paul real quick just to see how he's still going on uh, with our, um, uh, while he's printing. And he's certainly he's mixing in a whole bunch of different color shirts as we get going, but um, just curious if you have any any other thoughts you'd like to add into well, here's the, the thing. quality. Yeah, you know, bad prints are bad for business. You know, if you if you have a bad print, you know, you're not just you know throwing that away. You you've got a cost in that. So you know, you've got to recoup the cost of your labor. You've got your ink cost, pre-treat, shirt cost. And let's say that you send it out the door, you know, if you didn't QC it correctly and it goes out the door, now you've got the shipping cost. Plus you've probably got an unhappy customer. So you've got to make sure that you deliver a quality product. And a lot of the features, some things that are going on behind the scenes in the 3070, you don't even see that keeps the printer running optimal. It then makes sure that you're putting out a quality garment. And that's very important. Like I said before, time is money. And the more time you can save, the better off that you are. And now it's time to check back in with Paul again. Hi. He's just having a good time, man. Yeah, he I is. swear. I think between me and you, we got the uh, tough part here of uh, you know virtual virtual audience. But uh, hey, Tim, I want to um, have a question that someone I've had five different people on the uh, on the questions sure, yeah. ask. What was uh, do you think? 
What do you think the average uh, cost is the prints that Paul's making? Do you have any kind of an uh, idea? We do. So not only do we have a, a tool that helps estimate the cost um, that comes with, you know, Garment Creator, the software that we use, we use for that. But even with um, uh, Wasatch software, there is a, a job estimator as well. And we know that when we've looked at all these images uh, that we're printing and producing on here, and these are big full-size images, there, it's, it's just under a dollar uh, in ink cost. I think the actual number, it's, it's down to the, the 10 thousandths of a cent, but it gets us down to about 94 cents uh, a garment is what we're, what we're on average printing across. There's some that are gonna be a little bit more, uh, and then there's definitely some that are a little bit less. And it's just, you know, that's kind of nice thing is we're printing, these are a hundred unique different images that we're producing on these garments. So there is no, um, you know, we're not just doing the same image over and over again. And that's actually a pretty good representation of a lot of uh, the garments that people print is it's, you know, you are going to get some, they're going to be a little more expensive and some that are a bit less, just that's kind of the nature of the business. But on average, it's under a dollar, every garment that we've been printing uh, and certainly about a, about a minute or so uh, for each shirt that we're producing. So I just want to, uh, one of the other things I just want to highlight while, while we have Paul kind of running the uh, show here is, you know, we've covered a little bit about some of the features that comes in the workflow software, how that can make a business a lot more efficient, um, what we're doing for productivity, uh, the quality, making sure we have good quality that comes out of the system. Um, but there is another part that's uh, kind of the, the dirty part of DTG printing, if you want to call it that, because literally you get hands on, um, but it's about maintenance and, and reliability of these systems. Uh, we spent a lot of time and effort uh, we, with our product, like our F2100, and, you know, which is our past, past generation printer, or current generation, sorry, uh, but our smaller, more of a commercial level printer, uh, where we've introduced products with a fabric wiper that's been in our DTG system all along, an inline cleaning system. Um, and that's helped on our F2100 to cut down the amount of maintenance that a person would do to be you know, about a minute or a few minutes of once a week. On the 3070, um, the nice thing is we're not starting from scratch here. We've taken what's worked really well and improving that. Um, so we've introduced on this system as a new maintenance, uh, maintenance liquid system that pumps ink up the cleaning tubes to basically remove any lint buildup, dissolve any type of buildup in the tube lines. Um, so your maintenance station stays very clean and healthy. Um, and then we do have a large fabric wiper that makes sure that print head stays pristine. And the great thing about this on this system is the amount of maintenance required. You can see in the image when it kind of comes up, the whole side door opens on one of the printers um, to be able to get easy access to clean around the print carriage or print heads. The total maintenance on this is about five minutes once a month. Um, it's not a thing that you need to do daily. I know some people will because um, you know I, I, we like to be pristine and clean about everything we do. But that maintenance activity, it's one of those things you can put this into a shop, run this machine, run it like crazy. Um, and you're not sitting there spending a lot of time with a, a technician to go through and cleaning on the system or to do other types of maintenance activities. It's done mostly by itself uh, using a fabric wiper and using very inexpensive maintenance liquid uh, that comes in a large size pouch. Um, and it just is only you know a few pennies a day is all it takes to keep this uh, system going. So aside from that though, there's some other things we do about the reliability and quality of this system. And one part that I can't stress enough is um, it's more than just uh, printer maintenance and, and uh, you know, activities that come along with it. When you get into things like the ink, this is, at the end of the day, what the product you're selling is a garment that has ink on the surface of it. Um, if the ink doesn't hold up in, in washing uh, or it's not safe for newborns, um, you've got a product you can't really sell. Or you, most of us wouldn't want to put our brand or put our name attached to, we, we made that. So we take a lot of uh, pride and ownership in our products and we've leveraged it. This is our Ultra Chrome DG ink set. Uh, same type of ink chemistry we have in our shirt called F2000 and F2100 systems. But these are a large one and a half liter ink pouch, uh, completely sealed. So there's no need on the printer to do any type of degassing or worry about contaminations. There's a filter block in the middle. Um, and then we're also looking at the system um, as a way to be able to make these things really easy. You can keep these things going. The printer holds uh, two white inks uh, and as well as a, a pouch for each color ink. That gives us um, quite a bit of uh, capacity in the system, about nine liters total. And these pouches, they simply just pull up and you can take them out of the printer, put them back in. Uh, and it's easy to change. It only takes a moment to do. Not just uh, the size of the ink pack. These ink packs, they are OECOTEC certified. Uh, so that's a global standard to make sure that these are safe for newborn skin uh, contact, uh, as well as uh, you know, any human skin contact. It has a global organic textile standard. So if you are focused on making organic cotton product lines, 
Um, this, you can use this and you'll be able to maintain your organic certification. And it also, um, also does have AATCC wash fastness ratings. Uh, when properly cured, you're able to get up to a, a level of five for wash fastness, which is essentially the life of that garment. Um, and that's a big deal. We wanna make sure that those garments, they, they last. I mean, as much as we want customers to come back to uh, buy another t-shirt, we want them to come back to buy another cool design, not just come back and get a replacement for the shirt that kind of failed after 10 washes. Our last little bit that I, that I have just on the, uh, the service side, and again, this is stuff that's always a little bit more out there, but there is a new product that uh, we've introduced called Epson Cloud Solution Fork. The cool thing is there's nothing to install. There's no work to really do for this. This is a system with our ShareColor F3070 that takes the uh, service data only that's there. When you allow it to go do this, it, it, it's secured information that goes up and it's just on the printer metrics. It um, allows you to be able to see uh, uh, basically a production dashboard. You can see that through a web browser, through a, a mobile phone uh, application, uh, through any of the app stores, or even on a tablet uh, to see what's actually happening, what your production rates are, how many shirts you're producing um, per, per hour, per shift, and how that was doing from last month or last week or different reporting periods. And you can see your whole fleet of printers combined. Um, that's one of the cool things about it, is it gives you that production monitor capability. But the other part is, is if there happens to be an unlikely event where there is a need for a service uh, call, um, our service technicians, when you when we call in, they're able to, to see what's happening. They can pull in that information, understand what the error codes were. So rather than trying to describe the issue over the phone, like it sounds like rrr, rrr, instead of, oh, 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 you know, a different sound that these printers make, um, you don't have to do that. It, it simply comes in that we're able to see, uh, with your permission, we're able to see what the printer uh, error history was and what the conditions that led up to that. So we're able to better diagnose that and resolve that possibly remotely or have a service tech out there um, on site to be able to repair that issue. And speaking of service techs, these printers, while they, uh, they do have a, a warranty plan that comes with them, uh, one of the exciting things, this, our ShareColor F3070 is the first printer that we've introduced that allows um, has a feature built in to have user uh, replaceable print heads. Um, these print heads that you saw me holding earlier, these are definitely long life print heads. We know they're gonna last for quite a long time. Uh, but what's exciting is with some of our service plan options, you could have the option, it's a discounted plan where you, Epson will do service uh, on the printer if there happens to be a circuit board error or a plumbing error, um, things that would really unlikely ever happen. But if you happen to have, for some reason, a, a print head was damaged during the middle of printing, um, rather than waiting for a service tech to come out the following day, you can be able to replace a print head, no tools needed. It only takes about a, a two to three minutes to replace that head. And you can have that printer back in service in under an hour. Um, and when time is money at the rate these machines are going, I think uh, someone was uh, giving me a number, a ballpark number, the rate we're running today, it's about $2,500 an hour of sales. Uh, that they were showing just during this event um, on these uh, shirts. Time is money. We don't want to waste any time waiting uh, for someone. So if we can replace that, that definitely is a big part uh, in helping us move forward. So I think with that, I'm gonna, we're going to check in on Paul real quick just to see how he's still doing over there. Uh, I think we're doing pretty good. I know we're more than halfway through our, our uh, uh, deck. So I'm looking at the clock right now. It's 1033 about. And I know we're, we're well past the... Uh, uh, 50 plus mark. So uh, I think 55. So we're, we're cruising, cruising along. He's doing quite well with the, uh, you know, on that, that target of trying to get to hundred shirts or more uh, within the hour. I think we're doing quite well. Well, you know, Tim, something I was going to add, you know, is, is really, again, like I said before, all of these things that, that Epson has, you know, they, they all come together to help you have a completely integrated system that's a lot more than just speeds and feeds. It's there to help you be more productive. There's a lot more to it than just putting a shirt on and, and hitting the print button. There's all the things that you don't see. And like you said, how many, how many other people offer up to five years extended service? That's a big thing. You know, Epson's so confident in this machine that we are offering up to five years extended service. Now that's true on the F2100 and on the 3070 both. So that, that is a big deal. We're here to help you, you know, with your business. Uh, we want to be a, a partner with you. 
And that's why we add all these extra uh, value added features and benefits into the machine to help you to be successful. You know, downtime, it, it, it's not good. When you have downtime, if you have a broken machine and, and you have to wait or, or, you know, in some cases, people are waiting weeks to get their machines repaired from, you know, uh, other DTG manufacturers. You know, we put it right in writing, right in our extended service agreement. We tell you things like, how long the print heads are expected to last. And we tell you in there that we are going to have our best effort to be there within 48 hours if your machine breaks down. And guess what? Most of the time in, in larger areas, we're there the next day if you do have an issue. We understand that. Again, goes back to my old thing, time is money. You know, if your machine's not running, you're wasting time, you're wasting money. You can't make money with a broken machine. So that's why it's very, very important when you're looking at a DTG machine for you to see what is the extended service agreement, what's gonna happen if my machine does have uh, an error or if it, it does break down. So that's very, very important. Perfect. That's, that's awesome, Matt. Thank you for that. Uh, it's a good point. I mean, there's definitely, you want these machines and it's an investment. You want them running uh, for, for years to come. Yeah. So Tim, here's the other thing. I would like to invite everyone here, uh, if they're interested in the 3070, to please contact your, your uh, 3070 dealer or contact Epson. Let's take the time to evaluate your business. Let's do some demos as we're doing here now with, with Paul, we can do the same thing with your artwork. By the way, folks, never buy a DTG machine unless you see it print using your artwork. That's very important because you need to know how things work, you know, with what you do every day. You know, we can show you canned artwork like this that looks great, but you need to look and see how it, how it prints and what the print speed is and what the cost is with your artwork. And we're more than willing to do that at, at Epson or with our Epson certified F3070 dealers. So that's something very important. All right. So we're going to go here um, and we're going to answer some of the questions. There's a lot of them. I know I've answered some of them uh, by chat. So we're going to take the time to answer your questions uh, live. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, unless you have any other comments, Tim, we're going to switch it back to yeah. Morgan to, to answer the questions. No, I, I appreciate yeah. it. And I, that's, I think we want to, uh, yeah, I, definitely you want to see your artwork on a shirt. Uh, it's the best way to decide and know what, what you're getting into. Um, and yeah, we'd love to, uh, I'm sure that we've, we've done enough talking. I know Paul's, uh, he's not even breaking a sweat compared to me over here. Um, but I'm sure we're going to start getting the sweat happening now. And Morgan, uh, if you'd like to, I know you have some questions um, that I think have come in already. If you want to start, well, let's let's get to it. We do. We do. We have a lot of questions, so it's great. Um, <laughs> oh, a lot boy. of people are interested <laughs> in it. So um, some of the, the big questions is uh, a lot of people have seen the shirts come out. Um, number one, what shirt were you using during the I there was a I mean, there's mm -hmm. some hoodies and some different color shirts. but what brand were you using? Uh, you know, it's a great question. I should have probably covered that earlier. We're using a, a good mix of shirts we have uh, on here uh, are some next level 3600s. Uh, we're using some Gildan uh, soft style as well as Gildan 2000. Uh, Hanes, uh, we're using uh, their N260 uh, sweatshirt um, that's on here. We actually even are trying a, a new new product from uh, District uh, Tees that has a, uh, that's already has a pre-treated uh, uh, pre-treated already built into the garment that it's a tri-blend 
um, that lets us be able to print right onto it and off we go. It's, it's pretty fantastic on uh, what we're doing. So we have a pretty good range of products. Uh, you can see there's different colors uh, that we're printing from you know, some hot pink and uh, purples and blues. Um, but it's, it's trying to, you know, the great thing is with these systems, you can use 100% um, cotton ring spun is what, you know, most people will tell you is works best with direct to garment. Uh, and there's not really any lying to that. That absolutely is definitely a good shirt. Uh, but printing on a, a tri-blend works phenomenal with these, uh, uh, these printers. And the feel of those garments are definitely worth the premium. Um, you're able to sell at a much higher price, uh, that rock concert tee, that really good feel. Uh, to it. We're able to do that as well as also just some, you know, some basic uh, down and dirty blends. Um, but usually the best quality we, we find this tends to be with 100% uh, ring spun cotton or even on the tri blends work really well. Awesome. Thanks. And uh, a lot of people noticed that uh, they, they printed, you know, other brands of uh, DTG and they, they noticed there wasn't boxing um, happening on these shirts. What pre treater or pre treatment? did you use on this <laughs> so to make good, that not happen? It's a good question. I know that the, uh, the part of the uh, secret sauce or maybe the not so secret sauce, I hope it wasn't a secret because we do try to make sure customers know. Um, our, we're using our Epson uh, T43R1 uh, uh, pre-treat. It's our second generation cotton uh, or predominantly cotton based uh, pre-treat liquid that really leaves no uh, very little any marks at all that there's any type of staining uh, or anything that's going on there so you could take that garment you can print it uh, when it comes out of uh, when you're finally done with it if it went onto a retail shelf uh, there you don't have to go through and explain why it looks so different um, or why there's a stain box or you got to wash it before you wear it we don't need to have that type of disclaimer that's on there uh, one of the big parts that we do with uh, our system is we are using um, if you notice in the video where those garments are going um, is paula is dropping those into a conveyor heat tunnel um, and so we do use that actually in our pre-treat process as well um, so we take our garments we pre-treat them we'll run them through sometimes if the garments have a lot of wrinkles we may press them prior to but we'll pre-treat them run them through a tunnel um, and then we can get going on printing. Uh, and to, so depending on the type of garment, sometimes we may do a press if it's a really uh, uh, hairy or furry, uh, you could call it a, a fibrillous uh, garment with a lot of fibers all over the place, we may do a quick press towards the end. Uh, but simply we're just using the heat tunnel is a, is a big part in using the right type of curing, but it's also used in the pre-treating process as well. Perfect. And uh, so heat presses do work for this process, mm -hmm. right? So they can use a heat press for the F3070? Absolutely. Uh, there's no problem with using a heat press. Um, you know, when we start getting in, if you're running 100 shirts an hour um, on the to cure those garments, uh, you're going to be pretty busy uh, managing heat presses. A, a conveyor tunnel is much faster, a lot less labor intensive. You simply just put the garment in, it comes out the other side done. Uh, but absolutely, if you happen to, depending if you're if you don't need to run 100 shirts an hour day in and day out, but you're you do have a big rush for an event where you may be printing you know, I need a, a 40, 40 shirts within the hour. Um, you got one printer. You could use a heat press uh, at a small, like if you're doing a uh, road show uh, where you have these going around an event, you could absolutely use a heat press to, to, to both pre-treat as well as also uh, uh, cure those final garments. Great, perfect. Um, here's maybe a question for you, Matt. Um, I have an F2100 and I'm considering actually another F2100. Um, why should I consider the F3070 instead of more F2100s? Well, again, uh, not to repeat myself, but again, time is money. You know, a 2100 is a great machine and it makes really good prints. And the big thing is depending on your business, you know, a 2100, you're going to get uh, I would say you should be able to get 20 standard prints an hour from a 2100. Uh, you're going to get, you know, are you, as you're going to see here today, we'll see where we end up. But uh, you can see there's quite a bit uh, more shirts that can be produced on a 3070. So it's all about your business and what you need to achieve. Uh, if you're only printing 60 shirts a day, then probably another 2100 is going to do it for you. But if you're really wanting to produce some shirts, you know, 400 and up a day, I would say that you should start looking at uh, a 3070. 
it all comes down to that. The big difference in to 2100 to 3070 speed and ink cost. Those are the two basic factors. Uh, in some cases, your ink cost could be uh, almost cut in half by using the 3070 over the 2100. But, you know, don't buy a 3070 and print all your production in two hours for the week. Uh, it doesn't make sense. So you need to really sit down. And if you speak with any of our, uh, our 3070 dealers, they have the background and the information. They can sit with you and evaluate what would be, the, you know, your best course, whether to buy another 2100 or to go ahead and buy a 3070. Hey, Matt, I just wanted to uh, hop in real quick here. So yeah. right now, Paul is loading. We're just about 45 minutes in, and he is loading number 78 on that garment. Wow. So I think if my math is right, we're running about like 102, 103 shirt an hour uh, run rate right now. And we're looking good to, uh, you know, hold up That's to our right. promise of, uh, uh, of getting, getting all 100 out before the end of the hour. Great. Perfect. Um, let's go on to another question we, we wrote down here. Um, how long were, how long will my prints last? So they came from screen printing and now they're wanting to get into DTG. And so how long will my prints last on this DTG compared to their screen print? That's a really good question. Uh, since Tim talked about it before, I'll go ahead and, and take that one. Um, Here's the thing, we use a standardization and it's called uh, a wash test that's performed under the AATCC. Now that's the American Association of Textile Colorists and Chemists. Now what we do is we print a shirt, we cure it, we send it in to their lab. What they do is they take and cut the shirt in half. They have a control side. The other side, they take and they put in a washing machine. And this washing machine has big steel balls that abrade the fabric and they wash it. Now the test is a 20 cycle wash test. They perform the test. They let the shirt naturally dry. They don't put it in the dryer, it naturally dries. Then they take the control and they put them back together and they look at them under a microscope. Now what they're looking for is how much the fabric has been abraded and how much ink is lost during the wash. So they rank it between zero and five. Okay, zero being the worst, five being the best. Now Epson, it's a perfect five. We've done it with uh, our ink sets going back to the F2000. Perfect five. That compares to plastisol screen printing, also to uh, water-based screen printing. So we have very, very good durability and we have the paperwork to back it up. So look and compare. If anybody else that, that does publish their AATCC wash test, you will see we are superior. Also, another thing that most people don't consider is safety. You know, everybody's talking about the Green New Deal and everything wanting to go green now. Well, Epson's been that way for quite a, quite a long time. We have OECOTech certification too. Now, what that does is that ensures that our ink and pre-treat, you got to have both, are certified that they do not have any harmful substances. There's nothing like cadmium or lead or anything violates bad in that ink or pre-treat. And when we have this certification, we, we, we can ensure that you can use these uh, garments for printing uh, printing these garments for children 13 years of age and younger. So that means there's nothing bad in there. And as most of you know, there is a federal law called the Child Protection Safety Act that, you know, it's illegal basically to print shirts for children that have any harmful substances in them. So when you're looking at DTG printers, make sure that they have 
these types of certifications. Not all printers are the same, not all companies are the same. Sorry, I was a little long-winded. No, that was great. That was great because it actually answered another question that <laughs> someone had about uh, how safe is the ink in the pre-treat. So very, very safe. That's great. Um, let me throw this question to you, Tim. Um, and this is through the demo process too. Um, it's two questions. What's the resolution you're printing at? And how do I actually get one of the samples being printed? Um, for sure, well, a couple of different spots. The resolution that we're printing on majority of these documents or garments are uh, 1200 DPI. Um, there are a few that we are printing um, just because of the images look well, they're still sellable quality. That we're printing at, uh, we call 600 DPI, but it's, it's different than uh, what some people may have experienced with some printers where resolution, it looks faded or really dark. Remember we have this very large print head that can put down a ton of white ink uh, if needed to get a very good opaque print mode or print quality even at 600 DPI. Um, so with that, I know people look at numbers. Uh, what really is important is looking at the print. Um, so the resolution that we're choosing uh, and using for these garments, it, it's really appropriate, but we're somewhere between uh, the 1200 DPI is where most of our, our prints are being made at. Um, but we do have a few that are running uh, at about 600 DPI, which are, are really suitable for the image. Um, as far as getting a print, uh, there's a number of different ways to do this. The best thing is if you wanna see one of the shirts we're printing here, we can certainly do that but it probably is more meaningful um, to have the image that you have. Uh, you know, what do you use as a reference to see? Uh, and that's where Matt earlier mentioned this. Uh, definitely, we wanna set this up, uh, get, get in touch. We wanna to do a live demo. We'll actually show you your print being done, or it could be one of these files too. Um, but we'd prefer to show you your print being done with one of these systems. Uh, we can do it virtually or in many of the spots in the country as things start opening up. Uh, you may be able to even do an in-person demo. Um, easiest way to do that is, uh, you know, with registering on the event, you can reach out to one of our, our resellers or even on uh, epson.com forward slash F3070. Uh, you can go in there and request, uh, we request a demo. We'll be able to set this up and be able to get that going for you. Cool, thanks. And we see uh, a lot of people have seen, you know, the, the shirts and the hoodie in the background. Um, of Paul printing there. I mean, is there anything else, any other applications that you can do on the on these machines? Uh, absolutely. Um, I looking around, I see a table right now, uh, not too far from me. But we have all sorts of different things from printing on hats, uh, tote bags, on shoes, uh, printing on jeans, uh, and like there's different. The neat thing is, I'm just going to uh, grab uh, the platen off of one of our systems here. These platens are completely interchangeable. Um, so what I use on the F2000, the F2100, I can also use on our F3070, which is just uh, next to me. Same base system. So um, with that, we can be able to support many different types of applications. Uh, Epson makes a ton of different platens, uh, or not a ton, but we make a number of different size platens from like a polo platen uh, that has a groove on the middle, um, as well as an extra large uh, size platen for doing double and triple XL garments, as well as also use size platens for doing things like a, a baby onesies. Uh, and different products. And there's a number of uh, products on the market as well for doing more specialty goods like hats, um, uh, sleeves, you know, hopefully we don't need too many more of the face mask uh, uh, platens, but um, there's different uses for those, but there's plenty of platens available really to, for more of those specific application uh, needs that are there. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. Um, another question that came through from some uh... F2100 customers is, there's an F2100 and F2000 garment creator. Um, how does that compare to the F3070 garment creator that's run in the printer? It's a good question. Um, on that, the garment creator, the, the interface is very much the same. Um, there are some differences in the print modes between the 3070 and the 2100. Um, so by doing that, we do have two separate versions. And it's nice if you're um, it's a very similar workflow or interface, and you could use some of the hot folder uh, tools the same way between both systems. Um, and the nice thing is, is so we're, today we're using Wasatch SoftRip uh, to be able to drive the automation features. And in doing that, it, it's the same interface. It's just a, whether it's a 2100 or an F3070, uh, it's the same interface and same workflow that you'd, you get to, uh, that you'd use. But Garment Creator, it's the, if you learn, uh, how to use Garment Creator, what we have for our F3070. Um, there are different feature modes and trying to put that in there would make it a little too complicated to have one uh, that does it all. Um, so we just have two versions, one for more of the F2100 and F2000, and then also one for the F3070. Awesome. And uh, 
Garment Creator doesn't produce barcodes, or does it? Like uh, the Wasatch does. Correct. Garment Creator on its own does not do uh, barcode, uh, creates the barcode or the workflow automation features. Uh, and that's where Wasatch has, uh, they've been doing this for years um, with uh, things like dye sublimation and uh, signage printing, uh, photo printing. Uh, that's a feature that they have, and it's, it's great to be able to partner with them um, to say, hey, this is how to get, make this workflow uh, work seamlessly together. You use their software, uh, which will generate the uh, barcodes and also um, uh, generate the print data for the printers and make that happen uh, pretty seamlessly with with just a little bit of uh, integration uh, to your specific workflow uh, that you, you need. Perfect. And uh, Matt, I'll let you answer this one. Um, how many F3070s can one person really handle realistically at a time? Because they had a, a pod on their F2100s and they were running three to a person was running about three of them. Right. So as you see here, you know, we're showing you live. Paul's able to, I mean, he's working okay. He's able to handle two machines. From what my customers in the field that own multiple 3070s are telling me, one person easily can handle two machines. When you add on a third machine, it gets a little more difficult to service the machines as, as you see Paul doing now it's hard to get over to that third machine. So they may only hit that third machine like every, we'll call it a round here, every second or third round. So I would tell you, realistically, start off with two. If you think that you can increase it to a third one, I don't know. I, I would say two is optimal. Okay, two is optimal. No, that's good. That's good to know. And uh, you can see that the new hanger platen is on the F3070, right? And yeah. Is, uh, is the hoop needed? Can, well, here's the thing. I was asked what I was just going to say. Uh, I've seen this that a lot of people are asking this question. Yeah. You know, the hoop is, is great. It just depends on what you want. You know, Epson, we're, we're letting you determine which way you want to go. Uh, you can use the platen with nothing. This is just the straight plexi platen right now with nothing on it. Or you can use our new grip pad, which is a fabric sheet that pulls the shirt slightly and holds it on. So you could use that. Or if you really want to, you could use the hoop. Some people, they started out using the hoop back in 2005 and so they're gonna keep on using it. So, hey, we give it to you. If you wanna use the hoop and you feel comfortable with that, go ahead. I will tell you, I would not use it on the 3070. It's just an extra step. And because we have garment thickness optimization, it's really not needed. Um, another thing to note, by the way, any of you F2000 and 2100 owners out there that really like this new hanger platen, you can get it for your 2100 and your F2000. All of the platens interchange between all three models of machine. So if you did buy, like, let's say that you bought a, a cap printing platen, you can, for your F2000, you can actually use that on your uh, 3070. Hey, good news. This is uh, what you guys see on the screen. These are the last two of the uh, shirts. Uh, they're going in. We're at 1058, 1059 or so on the clock that I see here. Uh, and we are just, uh, just closing in. That's the number 99 is printing right now. And number 100, just uh, you can see the print carriage is moving back and forth on the far printer uh, towards the middle of the screen. Uh, going on here. So those are 99 and number 100. Uh, and we did start this not exactly at 10, uh, just shortly after, maybe 10, 10 and a half minutes in, or uh, what do you call it, a half minute in. Um, but so far, it looks like we're running um, just kind of the numbers at least over 100, maybe 102 uh, garments an hour Paul was able to run. And uh, I think to your comment earlier, Matt, could, you, could he run a third printer? Um, I don't think he'd be able to keep up with the third printer, but you might be able to get a little bit more out. Um, but two seems to be a pretty good number uh, for where we're at.
All right. This is pretty cool. So that's the last garment out. We are 100 shirts in, um, and I hope this is uh, pretty good. And Morgan, I guess a good question if we, uh, I'm not sure if we've answered most of the questions or, or not. Um, I know there was a, you know, one of the things that we didn't really cover here, and there's, again, there's a lot of features in the printer um, that we are just high level today, just kind of going through what you can do with this. Um, every month we're looking to have events uh, being put together that goes a little bit more deeper into different topics, like on how to properly pre-treat or get a little bit more detail into the workflow software. Um, we'll happily uh, be able to do that over the next few months. We'll be having different events, but certainly reach out to your, your dealers um, uh, as you're, you're looking and uh, interested in these types of products. We want to make sure you can see your images printed on the garments. Um, and actually, hey, Paul, if you're uh, done, um, man, you've been working a lot, but uh, this is just a kind of a quick recap. And Paul, thank you very much for working hard on what you've been doing. Um, and, you know, look at the size of the stack of prints that we had coming out of our tunnel. So we're, uh, we appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. If there are any other uh, questions, you know, feel free to reach out to Epson or to your uh, reseller. Um, and we'd be happy to uh, help you in any path uh, in the future. Thank you.